where are you right now? Take a second to just think about that. Where are you? MedEx, this is my second visit, and the first time that I was here, I remember walking into this hall and saying, wow, there is an experience that's crafted here. It's you, it's those who speak, it's the stories we tell, and it's this stage. Where is the patient? Take a second to think about that. If you could play the audio file, please. Well, I'm going to do this live then. Imagine this. That's the MRI machine. Imagine this. Beep, 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 incessantly. That's your ICU. Imagine this conversation happening all around you, all around you, all the time, that you are not a part of. That's what it looks like. So imagine for a second, and bear with me here, and think of health as a theater. Imagine that we are all in this theater of health. There are actors. We have doctors, physicians, nurse practitioners, MA. This ensemble cast grows every single day. And the patient, the most important actor of all. There is an audience. Oftentimes, that's the family members. It's people outside who are seeing what's happening. And I'd argue that sometimes your patient becomes an audience. You become an audience as a patient when you watch conversations about you that you are not part of. There are props. Just like you have stage props, there is all this equipment around you that serves this theater of health. And if you're the one who is having a surgery on you, you become a prop. And then there's a script. There is a story, there's a script. Sometimes you know what it is as a patient, and sometimes you don't. But there is a script. And then there is the stage. I started with asking, where are you? Because no matter what happens in healthcare, it happens somewhere. It happens in some place. So if we took a second to think about that place, the theater analogy would be, does the stage matter? The stage on which we perform healthcare, we receive healthcare, we live our healthy lives. This setting that we create, does it matter? Now let me give you one small illustration. This is a study some of you may know, done way back in 1984 by Dr. Roger Ulrich. He reviewed um, case reports from eight years of gallbladder surgery patients. The only difference in this patient pool was one side of the hospital wing had a view of a brick wall, and the other side had a view of nature, of a park. All other things being the same, all other things being the same, they found that those patients who had this view of nature recovered faster. They spent less time in the hospital, had less painkillers prescribed to them, made fewer negative notes about the, the staff in general. This was published in Science. It became a seminal paper. It became the birth of an entirely new field called evidence-based design. And all that was about was place matters. It makes a difference today. There are more than 1,200 articles that link physical design to health outcomes directly. More than 1,200. Probably one more being written right when I speak. Those articles link physical design to things like infection control. We heard about MRSA this morning, and my brain went to, if you don't have cleanable surfaces, you are a breeding ground for infection. Falls in hospitals. How much of the environment contributes to falls? We create affordances that make healthy living and healthcare delivery problematic. But there's more than that. If you see that highlighted box over there, which is very easy to read, I'm sorry. But if you look at that, it, it links views of nature to sleep, to recovery, to length of stay, to stress mitigation. Daylight to circadian rhythms to ICU delirium. Simple things. 
But here's the catch. If physical design, if the design of the built environment, if the design of our environment makes such a difference, why don't we spend more time thinking about it? It's a very, very small portion of the operating cost. It's less than 10%. Often it's less than 1%. The design cost is less than 1%. The building cost is less than 10% of how long you operate, say, a hospital for. And what is different about designing buildings or designing the built environment versus maybe doing something with just policy or process? It can't be reversed. You're stuck with the stage a lot of times. It's not easy to change it. If we know this, then why do our hospitals still look like this? Why do our health and care environments just look like this? Now, I am very, very fortunate today to have on this panel experts, empathetic design thinkers, and truly revolutionary idealist activists who are going to join me to discover the answer to this and give a different perspective. Please welcome on stage Dr. Alexander Langerman, a surgeon and a design thinker, Dr. Bon Koo, an emergency physician and a design thinker, Monica Wittig, an architect, design thinker and innovator, and Jeff Stufer, who brings with him three decades of designing and building healthcare environments. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> 